going live with a brand new episode of Comic Days. Ah, and if you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach, and this is Princess Aurora Hess, looking very lovely today, just like usual, doing that princess wave. You do it too, but I don't respect. And of course, there's the coca dog. Princess is back, guys. Oh, we needed someone to ring us in, keep us honest. Ring us in. Ring us in. Like ring and ring and ding ding. What is that called? You like lasso them in. Real listen. Real listen. We could have been rung in though, right? Like you like never been ringing? rung like you've been rung with comic games. Get your bell rung every Wednesday live. Bell rung. Okay. All right, guys. Today is Wednesday, and uh, Last cruises. I think I said that already. But Sorry, we're still recovering from Whatnot Con, which was pretty amazing. I know I said this earlier, but Whatnot Con was crazy. Five it was hours. crazy. Yeah. Five hours of streaming. Really drunk. Yeah, a little maybe a little bit. <laughs> but uh, it is new comic book day and uh, nice big. Actually, I'm really excited. There's a whole bunch of really good reads uh, that I can't wait to dive right into. And like we promised, we all read Ultimate Black Panther issue number three. And we're giving you our honest spoiler review. So we'll let you guys know how the world, the ultimate world, is going so far. If you're missing anything, if this was a good issue or a bad issue. And uh, Zach wanted to show you some games, too, right? We haven't shown him yeah. some games in a yeah. while. So we got a little bit of games. Packed a little sketchy. So hopefully I didn't get those crack games. That's true. But before I do a whole bunch of talking, yeah, Zach needs to wet his whistle for some reason. <laughs> The I'm, opposite, so, right? I'm so thirsty from hearing Adam talk exactly. so much today. Oh, Coco went like hid. Coco's like in the corner. Bounced over there. All right, we got here. What do we got today? I'm single handing it over a computer. It doesn't seem very safe. C4? Got a strawberry guava, C4, natural, smart energy, boosts metabolism, supports fat loss. I need that. Sharpens <laughs> mental focus. Like a whetstone. That's what it looks like. I think you can actually explode those, right? It's a wet stone if for the brain. If it's C4? If you heat it up enough, it will explode. You put it in the microwave for 10 minutes. With it will flavor. explode. Yeah. It will explode with flavor. <laughs> Let me say hi to some of our friends that are here. We got Las Cruces first to the show from New Mexico. How's it going, brother? Oh, we have Sharky Marky in the house from old Canada is here to hang out. We got Davey Clark. Ooh, the, one of the original gangsters is in the house as well. Gary B, the casual comic book guy, how's it going? I know you got to meet the princess in person recently. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous that I didn't get to meet you. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what else we got here. Ciro, how's it going, Ciro? Good to see you all the way from the East Coast. Whoa. The second best coast in America. Second best. In our opinion. So they have a lot more comics. There. The Nuck Tech, how's it going, buddy? I'm glad you were able to make it out to Whatnot Con. It's an amazing time. Ooh, Kenneth Bird, how are you doing? And happy, happy uh, Wednesday evening to you. It is uh, what, Water Wednesday? Drink your water? Pump day. Pump day. Ooh, uh, Paul Stanger, how's it going, Paul? Good to see our neighbor and friend. And Milt is in the house. How you doing, Milt? Milt got to see Princess as well. So yeah, every, she gets to see everybody. She gets to go to all these different cons. Me and Zach have to stay home and take care of Coco. Right? Yeah. yeah. Feed her and water She's her. so needy. And plant her. Mm -hmm. Harvest her. <laughs> Sick of my little children. Coco? Yeah. She's never vicious. bitten a child in their life that I'm aware of. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's fine. She might be a when, dog. The, when they're away, <laughs> Coco play. They'll go outside and bite and pass her by. Children. Bite that little kid. Bite that kid. And if you know, I'm going to. All right. We're here to talk about comics. <laughs> let's, let's get into new comic book day this week. Is nice and big. Got a nice big, uh, good amount, like $50, $60 in there. How it goes. Woo. Oh, and, Captain, my captain. Oh, Captain, my captain in the house. How's it going? Flexing away. So let's see. What's, uh, what's new in the comic universe? In the middle of April of 2024. I think it's a, it's a good comic book year. I'm digging this comic book year. So let me see. Oh, Steve Sayer. I'm sorry. Steve. How's it going, buddy? I never forget Steve. Let me see. Oh, hey, Steve. How's it going? And Princess remembered you because she put some jeans on before the show. So enjoy. Enjoy. Sorry about that, buddy. Sorry. Uh, we got shorts. Ghost Rider, The Final Vengeance, issue number two. This is the start to the uh, brand new series spinoff. This is also uh, Benjamin 
Benjamin Percy, who's been writing Ghost Rider so far, been killing it. A lot of people have been enjoying this a lot. As you guys know, the first issue, we knew we were getting a brand new Ghost Rider. And they spent the whole first issue kind of like having the spirit of Ghost Rider travel around and like take over new people. And they were kind of like testing it out. Like he's like, oh, I'm going to go into this guy and he'll be Ghost Rider for a second. And then like, no, I don't like that guy. Let me switch into this guy and he'll be Ghost Rider. And sometimes he spent more time in people than others. I think at one point he like goes into a shark and becomes that Ghost Rider shark and some weird stuff. I got an idea to pitch. I think Scotty Young should do his own Ghost Rider series. But the Ghost Rider is a little kid on a tricycle. That could work. That could work. Beating up all the little bullies out there. That could work. Beat up and like, look like Calvin and Hobbes. Agu. I see Agu How's lurking. Um, that would work. That would work. But anyway, at the end of the issue, we get to find out he finds mm. his brand new person, which is the hood. And if you look at that cover, it's I'm really enjoying some of Marvel's covers right now. He's got like the double guns pointed and then the... The face looks like a skull down the end of end of the guns and <clears throat> really cool. The the hood is sort of a minor fan favorite character created by uh Brian K. Vaughn back in the day. And minor. He, he's kind of like people like him. He, he like got his own book right off the bat. And he's a villain person, so it'll be fun to see a bad guy have Ghost Rider inside them so he can be like I don't like that guy. I'm going to kill him. You know how like, Ghost Rider never kills anybody, hardly ever kills anybody? Yeah, he should always kill he should people. always kill them. Always. Oh, no. He's not... Pun- oh, Cosmic... Pun- uh, Co- Cosmic, Cosmic Ghost, Ghost, Ghost Rider killed lots Definitely. of people. Definitely. Which is why everyone likes Cosmic Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. He always killed people. So I'm excited. We'll see how this goes. We'll he see. never let a bad man live. No, he never Con- did. Never um, did. Next up, we got The Walking Dead Deluxe Issue 87. Um, awesome cover on that one. Abraham... Um, I think it's Andrea and oh, Rosita. Got oh. all of them so far. So, I yeah. like Rosita. Yeah. So they're just From still the basically figuring out. Um, after Carl got shot in the eye, where they're they're doing a period where they're kind of freaking out. Where like whether or not like is Carl gonna live? Do I have to sit by his bed for a whole issue? Still really good. There's other stuff going on the outside, like rebuilding of the camp, um, of the t- like the town that they're in. But you know, it's good stuff. And then there's one eyed Carl. One eyed Carl. He's still in the bed, though. He's not out of the woods, which I'm assuming he gets out of the woods. Otherwise, it'd be a. Imagine what wasted time that'd be if they spent like two issues where he's like in a bed, like dying, and then they're like, he's going to make it. And then at the end, of, like the issues, he just like dies. Kind of and... sounds like DBZ. I'm getting better over seven episodes. Who died? No, no, like he. Well, Goku died multiple times. Oh, I think mean, like someone was like laying in the bed. Yeah, oh. Goku. Oh, Milt's digging the uh, the back mantle. Awesome, awesome. In the, in the hyperthermic time chamber. Hyperbolic time Hyper- chamber. <laughs> oh, that's a time one. Oops. That's where he goes in there and gets strong, right? Yeah. We're going off on a tangent. Right? This is not a Dragon Ball Z channel. It could be, though. Could be. It could be. Oh, we got uh, Captain Marvel issue number seven. Um, I was able to find my missing issues and caught back up with this series. Uh, Alyssa Wong is writing this. She's doing a really good job. I know a lot of people have been secretly talking about this book. And uh, I'm trying to remember, that character's name is like Luna. And she's the girl that's in the middle with Captain. So it's Captain Marvel down below. And then I think it's Luna is the name. And it's a new character? New character. She just showed up in the very first issue. And the purpose of this series is basically like, the Nega bands are back, and uh, Janus Vale, who's like the son of mm. oh Yuma, that's what Yuma, Yuna, Yuna, yes Yuna, that's what it is. Um, yeah, the son all... of the original Captain Marvel, and there's been back in the Bronze Age, there's a bunch of different issues where people had the Nega bands and they'd switch places with each other in the ne- in the negative zone, mm. and that happened a lot. It's actually how Captain Marvel got cancer is from being in the negative zone too much, and mm. so they're bringing this back. So Captain Marvel and Yuna each got a hold of the Nega band. So they're swapping places like in the movie, you know how they were like use their powers and then all of a sudden they switch where they're at. So now one of them is in the negative zone while the other one's in the regular zone. And Yuna doesn't really have like any powers really. So when she gets into like trouble, she has to like quickly switch places with Captain Marvel and then she can like fight off the bad guys and they switch back. But I think, I think Captain Marvel can only spend like an hour or so like in our time so they have to like plan it out right okay you know what i mean like she i think it's something there's a time limit 
to how long they can like stay in there. But if you guys aren't reading it, it's a really good book. Um, and I think there's some legs for this character in her popularity. So there's a bunch of other stuff. They just brought in um, Hulkling and Wiccan in there to help them out with some people that they're kind of battling. There's this new bad guy named Omen that they're kind of going after. And I can't remember. I didn't realize like Hulkling's actually related to like um, Captain Marvel. I didn't know that. The the male Captain Marvel, not not the other one. So what I didn't, the heck? Yeah, because he's like a, a Cree, right? Isn't he? I guess so. Or a scroll, Cree scroll, half Cree, Cree, I think half it's Cree. Cree. I think it's Cree. Isn't it? Because like, Captain Marvel was Cree. Yeah, it's something like that. Scroll. But I, it's good. It's a good book. I'm digging it. All right, we've got Avengers Twilight issue number five. So I think this ends at issue six. So this is I think one issue before the last one. Um, Hawkeye? Yeah, so uh, each Ooh. each one, they're all Alex Ross covers, and they've each one has highlighted a different hero that they've kind of shown in this new apocalyptic universe. So this is an Elseworlds sort of story. It doesn't take place in continuity, and you know, every the uh, everyone's much older. Captain America is an old guy or whatever, and the world has become crappy. And so far, up until the last issue, I don't think you've really known who the main bad guy is. We've kind of seen it as. Um, Tony Stark's son, who's kind of been leading the charge for the villains, but you can kind of tell someone's kind of behind him pulling the strings, and uh, you basically find out that it's Ultron, and then Ultron uh, also has a buddy who is pretending to be Jarvis, who is like supposed to be the butler, is actually Red Skull. So oh. it's Red Skull and Ultron are actually pulling the strings behind like uh, all the bad guys, so um, the, basically Cap's like putting together this team, and you've got like Captain America, you've got, which is the floating head Iron Man, because it only has a head left. You got Thor, who uh, comes back, and uh, Kamala. And at the end, there's always this girl hanging out with them that's like, kind of like, I think she has a bow, but she just kicks it with them. And then finally, they're like, put on the costume, be Hawk, Hawk Man, slash Hawk Girl. So, the Hawk new girl. What was it? Yeah, Hawk Eye. Why did I say Hawk Man? Hawk Eye. He's got an eye, Hawk Eye. But, um, it's good. It's really good. I really recommend the read. Chip Zdarsky's a really good writer, and uh, it flows really well. I, it's a quick story if it's over in, like, six issues, and if we get anything cool out of this, which we should. I think it's something something fun and exciting to read some some new stuff. So be worth it. I like it. I see Liger in the house. What is up? What is up? Didn't get to your LCS today? I hate when that happens. I hate when they don't get your book sometime. It hasn't happened to us in a while, but I feel like we should knock on wood or something. Otherwise... Something's gonna happen. Knock on granite. <laughs> Knock on granite. Um, we've got a uh, fall of House of X issue number four. And I'm starting to get these confused because I I wish the colors were kind of the same there, so I could tell which which one it was going off of. Because there's pow uh, rise of powers of X and fall of House X. This is the one that's taking place um, in the here and now. So okay. this is coming to the end of the Krakoa era. And you had, like, Cyclops was going on trial. He was going to be put to death by Orcus, who was, like, the evil group that's trying to get rid of all the mutants. And then, secretly, we found out that, like, the sinister clones are making, like, the super giant evil thing so that robots can basically take over. AI can take over the planet. Uh, and so, like, all the humans that were trying to get rid accurate. of the... The human... All the humans that are trying to get rid of the mutants are being screwed over at the same time because, basically, the robots want to take over. And, uh... Yeah, you got some cool stuff. Juggernaut's been traveling around with this like plant version of Krakoa trying to keep him alive where all these sentinels are trying to kill kill him. So like Krakoa looks like a tree that's like walking around, you know, from like Lord of the Rings. And Juggernaut's like trying to like protect him from all the sentinels, like, get away, get away. And like he's about to like lose and like apocalypse like showing up. So we'll see where, oh, that, good. where that takes. I kinda like the, the other book a little bit better, the Powers of House of X, I think is what the other one's called. It's a little more interesting, a little bit. A little bit crazier, but this one's definitely it's definitely see how this whole series ends. Oh, Larry in the house. How's it going, Larry? Larry Green. I read the first two books of the series, you know, like when the whole Krakoa started, so I'm just kind of finishing it off and see where this whole thing ends. It was too much to read the read the entire thing through, but maybe I'll go back one day. Maybe. Maybe. It's too mm -hmm. much to read. Um Hellblazer, Dead in America, issue number four came out today. Simon Spurrier, Aaron Campbell, Sandman Universe. Um, I was kind of like recommended reading this book. I think that's Constantine on the front, smoking a cigarette, I'm sure. Um, 
I don't know, he's got like a faith healer kind of uh, thingy on, oh. on his shoulders. I don't know, maybe I'm not as big a Constantine fan as I thought, but <laughs> it's a hard read. I'm going to power through at least a couple more issues. I know a lot of people like this one. Um, I, maybe I just don't understand it well enough, but uh, he's teaming up with Swamp Thing. They kind of like finally met up together. He's Constantine's basically dead in the story. He died at the end of the last series, and he's kind of like walking around without a heart, and they're like trying to figure out I, like, it doesn't seem like really trying to figure out anything to me, but he's just meeting up with old friends. And now that he's, like, kicking it with Swamp Thing, they're going to go on, like, another journey together and kind of mess things up. But, um, like I said, either Spurrier likes to put in really complicated words or, as Milt said, Constantine likes to have really complicated words. And it's a British writer writing a British character, and maybe that doesn't translate super well to me. But I'm giving it a try. I'm giving it the old college try. Just next next issue, just put Tiffany in there and have them meet up. Right? Who's yeah. Tiffany? You know, she can make your heartbeat. She can make your heartbeat. Like old, like the 80s yeah. Tiffany? Yeah. From Canada? Yeah. Oh, there you go. That could work. That could work. That could work. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working through it. I'm working through it. I'm see. I'll see where it goes. Speaking <laughs> of good books, we got Miles Morales issue 19 uh came out this week cody ziggler uh has killed it these last couple issues he is the writer on miles right now and i um after they got out of gang war and even kind of the end of gang war a little bit i have totally fallen back in love with this book uh that basically have put together it's like this cape like cape heroes or whatever they're like the bad guys sort of bad not really they're bad guys um they've been basically like hunting down superheroes during gangland and like screwing with them and they have their team which is like rabble and like rhino and there's a bunch of a bunch of other ones like hightail and gust or whatever all and they're basically hunting down miles team which is like him and prowler and shift kamala khan oh, okay. and um starling his girl his Ooh. girl but just which is interesting and uh, they basically have this big battle where they're all duking it out again, and it's really amazing. And Shift has always been one of my favorite characters that they've created. And uh, if you don't know him, he's that clone of Miles that survived, and he's kind of like goopy, and he can make different shapes out of his body. He never really talks uh, at all because he can't talk. And during this mission, he's been, like, hanging out with uh, Kamala on their own and, like, going off on these side missions and, like, hanging out. Well, as he comes back, she's been teaching him how to better use his powers because she's kind of similar, you know, like where her arm will get really big or she'll get really tall or really small. So she's helping him get his powers under control. And all of a sudden out of nowhere, he tells uh, Miles, like calls him brother. And he's never been able to talk before. And it was like really cool. And I like this character a lot. And then right at the end of the story, he gets blasted super hard. And then everybody's like, I think uh, Shift is dead. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I was like this, my heart was like way up like this. And then he's like about to get killed. And then the book ends and I'm like, find out next month if shift is dead. And I was like, what? <laughs> so really good. Uh, but I feel like that's how a comic book should be, right? Yeah. they Like leave you wanting more? They basically make you buy the next issue. With that maybe. Thing. But. You made me do it. It's really good. It's really good. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Liger knows. Liger knows. He knows. He hasn't read it yet, but he knows. Uh, we got Kid Cuddy presents Moon Man issue number two. Um, it's also co-written by Kyle Higgins, who does like um, Radiant Black and the Massive Universe, and this is in the Massive Universe. And uh, I heard some good rumbling about issue one, and I was able to find the second print when it came out. And read it, and uh, surprise, it's really good. It's it's actually really good, and it's a kind of a simple story, but very interesting, and feels very real, like in our own world, where the main character is like an astronaut, and he works for this company where the owner is not very well liked, I guess, by the world or community, but he's also like a very rich person, uh, not the astronaut, but the company owner that he works for, and like most people hate. Um, hate that owner and he's sending people into space on his ship and uh the main guy's an astronaut goes up in there all of a sudden like this big time frame like they lose this time where they're like we don't know what happened for an hour i can't remember what the exact time is but it's like basically none of the astronauts remember what happened to them for an hour 
and NASA or whatever they are connected to at the time is like, we can't let you come back down until we figure everything out. And then they run all these tests and everything comes back normal. And when he comes back, um, finally lands back on Earth and he goes back to his house, I think it's his little brother that he lives with or something. And uh, they get along, but the brother like hates the company he works for. And he's also like part of all these like, uh, um, what is it, like picketing stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like rallies, Protesters. protesting. Yeah, like protesting against the company that his like brother works for. I'm pretty sure it's his brother. I don't think it's his dad. I'm pretty sure it's his brother works for. And in, during the rally, all this crap breaks out and all these people start getting hurt. And out of nowhere, he like bursts into these powers and like stops this, like stops all this stuff going on. But he has like a mask on, so it's hidden. But I don't think he knew he was going to get the powers. It was cool. It's a very, very interesting story. Good start well, to the story. The, the, the brother that was on. The one that was on the moon or the one that went up to in the space okay. came back down. So we don't know where that time lapse and he doesn't know he doesn't know what happened during the time lapse, but obviously he somehow got powers. Oh, okay. And I don't think he actually knew that he had powers during like the uh, during during the um, commotion when people were getting hurt. Okay. And you don't know what happened to the, I can't remember. I don't think you know what happens to the other astronauts either because he's not alone on the ship. So I'm assuming the other people may have gotten powers too. So and it's all in the Radiant Black universe, so he could run into. Radiant Black, and there's some crazy stuff going on in that book, too. But Milt agreed it was a good read. So hmm. I, I was very, very surprised how good it was. So very nice. We'll very see. nice. We'll see. Next. Good job, Kid Cuddy. Good job. Kid Cuddy. Uh, Spawn 352. I can't believe we're that high on this one. Brett Booth. Interiors. Oh, I love Brett Booth. Interiors. The whole interiors. Um, it's, like, co-written by McFarland, And I can't remember the other guy. His name is, like, McGonville? McGonville? I think. I did read issue 351. I have not read Spawn in a long time. I've decided to start collecting Spawn again because I have a hunch that they're rare right now. I could be totally wrong, but I'm feeling it's a hunch, um, which I'm telling all you guys. Maybe you guys go out and buy, buy Spawn, and then it won't be rare, but maybe. Uh, anyway, um, I think what, like recently Jessica Priest became the new like like runner. King of Hell. King of Hell. So there's a bunch of other stuff like bunch of vampires and things going on some undead people that were messing with each other that i wasn't quite sure who who they all were but we'll we'll, we'll see oh burped oh. on the princess yeah sorry you always burp on. but anyway i'm not gonna dive too deep into spawn because it's it's a weird book but it is what it is if you like spawn you like spawn it happens i'll give it a i will give it a try i will give it a try all right let's jump over a little bit we got Star Wars High Republic, a, another High Republic. So this is another mm -hmm. number one, Adventures, issue number one. But this is uh, the Saber for Hire. And uh, Adventures is the Dark Horse version of Star Wars. So this is another new series. So it might be a little darker. I know it should be a kid's version. You said Dark Horse because the kids was it's, done by IDW. It switched over. To, oh. So IDW now owns, or Dark Horse now does the kids version. Okay. Interestingly enough, what I know about this character is she was in the last series um, with the Blue Border. It was actually really cool. So she was, was a oh. Jedi who stopped being a Jedi and became a monster hunter. And so she was kind of, not ruthless, but didn't really care that much about anyone else around her besides mm. just being... A, like a like a Jedi monster hunter, but she didn't work for the Jedi Council. And in her travels of like basically showing up on a planet and someone would be like, yo, this monster's causing us trouble. Can you kill it? And she'll be like, yes, I'll kill this monster. And then she would go there and like as she was doing these journeys, she picked up like wary like travelers with her, like people that were like, you saved my life. I owe you a life debt. Kind of like Jar Jar Binks kind of stuff. But it was cool. I could see the character was interesting. You know, it's, it's fun to see she kind of reminded me a lot of like Ahsoka, where it's like you could tell that she used to be a Jedi, but now doesn't give a damn. Plus, she kind of looks like Ahsoka a little bit, so slightly. Maybe it's Ahsoka's ancestor. She has like a whole head thing going on, you know? I don't know. Maybe she got a cut. Maybe. But I'm reading them all. I'm seeing where it goes. It's uh, oh. it's interesting. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's finish this off with some Spider-Man action. Spider this was my favorite Man. book. Uh, I, I ran out of my room and told Zach about it. Uh, right away, as soon as I got done reading. Shut up. <laughs> uh, this is Spectacular Spider-Man, issue number two. I read issue number one and uh, completely fell in love with this book. If you're not sure what's going on, 
It's uh, Greg Wiseman, who's the creator of... Show the beer again? It's not... Gargoyles. So he's the creator of Gargoyles, which I actually haven't dug his writing that much. So I don't know. It's strange to, to really like this book. But it's drawn by Humberto Ramos, who is amazing. In my opinion, one of, one of the best Spider-Man artists of all time. Um, but it's cool. You basically get to see, like, Miles and Peter. And they basically have come to an agreement that, hey, we don't spend enough time together. And Miles is kind of like... We need to spend like more time together as like Spider-Man and Spider-Man. And then Peter's like, no, we need to spend more time together as Peter and Miles. And let's go get coffee ev- once a week at a coffee shop together. And it sounds That's goofy, so nice. but the writing is so good um, that just their conversations are ridiculous. Like, like Peter spends his whole time at the coffee shop trying to get the coffee guy to call him a, a regular so that when he shows up to the counter, the guy just gives him his coffee without him order, well, asking for the order. And it's super funny because Miles is like, dude, you just take out your phone and you put the coffee order in and they just hand it to you. You don't even have to talk to the guy anymore. He's like, no, no, that's not how you order coffee. You got to go up there and tell him your coffee, make friends with the guy. And then the next time you go in, he uh, hooks you up with the coffee. I think Andrew Detlef is back. What is up, Andrew, man? I haven't seen going? you in forever. We talk about missing you all the time. Good to see you. Um, but there's just so many cool, like some cool writing in the story that I've never seen before. Like I was telling Zach when they're fighting like uh, the Jackal Miles together, Miles Warren, and like Peter calls calls the Jackal Miles because that's his real name. And Miles and uh, Miles Spider Man Miles gets mad at him because he like webs Peter in the mouth. He's like, "Don't tell people my secret identity," and he's like. We're not talking about you, Miles. I'm talking about the other Miles. And just little stuff like that like cracks me up. And I don't know. It's really good. If you haven't read it, it's really good. It probably helps that uh, it's my favorite character, favorite characters, but it's good. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All right. Speaking of other characters, Zach's like, it's only okay. It's only okay. I'm going to make you read it. Spider Boy issue number six came out. It's a funny one. And also, I think this is also a Humberto Ramos cover. That's probably why it looks so awesome. I think this is. I'm pretty sure this is. But he's not. He does not draw the interiors on this one. It is uh, Dan Slott's spinoff from. They did the Spider Man book, which now has led into Spider Boy and uh, Bailey Briggs, who I also adore. Which I feel like most people don't like Bailey, but I like mm-hmm. Bailey. So I'm gonna tell you about Bailey. Um, <laughs> as you guys know. Every most everybody in the 616 universe doesn't know who Bailey is. He's appeared and nobody remembers him because of his uh, being like stabbed with this, that knife that makes you disappear. And he's now shown back up and he remembers everybody, but nobody remembers him. The lady on the cover is Madame Monstrosity. And she is like a disciple of the High Evolutionary. And she has a bunch of animal characters that she combined kids with animals and uh and she makes them together and then controls them kind of like high evolutionary does you know like animal Uh. people and she thinks that she could be the creator of uh spider boy and he i think actually thinks she is the creator of him but she doesn't quite remember just that it makes sense so she actually made another guy named boy spider out of his dna so there's so but there's he's a little more spider ish than boy i guess Uh. it's kind of confusing but uh I'm interested to see where this story ends up. There's a bunch of really cute stuff that goes along with it. Uh, Oh, the Spider Boy vampire variant was interesting. Oh, for that one. He does actually, the weird thing about Spider Boy, it's different than Spider Man, is when he gets really angry or really ramped up, he becomes more spider like. Like he grows extra eyes and he gets all fanged out and he like kind of freaks people out when he does that. But he doesn't look like that all the time. When he goes back to normal, he looks like a normal kid and. He has like a nice family that he kind of hangs out with at the like homeless shelter. So it's got like a bunch of interesting stuff that having to like live there because nobody knows him. You know, no one's claiming him. Like Peter will let him hang out with him every once in a while. But like he doesn't want a kid sidekick because he thinks it's weird. Like Batman shouldn't have a kid Robin sidekick because that's weird. Right. And they're kind of poking fun at that. But he's like, you can only fight like low level villains. So I don't know. You know, that's it. That's the end of Spider Boy. The name change. Hola, what is up? And Jeff Coy, how's it going? I will give you guys an update. Um, I've been ordering the books for uh, First Blood, right? 
Marvel First Blood. Blood Hunt? Blood Hunt, yes. Good, you remember. Um, I've been ordering the books. There are crazy amount of books for that series. So, um, oh, thank you, Mill. Yeah, don't forget to crush the like button. Um, I'm going to try and read almost all of them, but maybe we'll have to do like a special show like on a Monday and do uh, Blood Hunt because there's no way. If like four of those books come out in one one Wednesday that we'd all be able to read those and talk about it. So we have to do like a special like Monday show for Blood Hunt. If you guys want to hear about Blood Hunt. It's, it's spanning like eight titles. It's ridiculous. Plus they have like, I think there's at least two or three main titles at the same time. I don't even know how that's possible. It's going to be like the biggest event I've ever seen. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous to me. But if it's good, then... I know, it could be a, a big pile of crap. And then it's a huge waste of money. Like, Union Jack is getting his own number one Blood Hunt book. Oh, no. The Bring Back Midnight Suns is coming back with a number one. Okay, that's good. Cool. Right? Okay. There's a bunch of cool stuff. They got all the big writers. They've been so. bringing Jar Jar back. I think, oh, 59 books in all, Gary says. 59 books. For the total run, there will be 59 books. Probably with all the t- It's massive, dude. It's massive. And just so you know, in the regular run for Blood Hunt, I just found out there's a rated R version. So there's going to be two versions of the book, so you can either get the regular version or the red, I think it's the red book. And uh, it's, I read the description there. It's like, if you're not too much of a pansy, you should read this version. You, usually and I'm like... Of course I'm getting this then. You calling me a pansy? At least in the movies. I think they uh, call it the Red Band version. Red Band. That's what it's called. Okay. Yes, the Red Band version. Well, well, well. That's Zach's on point on. today. All right. Well, see how on point Zach is oh, when no. he explains to us oh, no. a spoiler, full spoiler review of Black Ultimate Panther. Oh, oops. Black Panther. Oh. Issue number three. Not the regular black panel. It is I think I'll wait for the omnibus. That would be, yeah, the omnibus. That's what she was thinking, too. I bet it would be really fun to read that as an omnibus. But thing. how much would it be? I don't I mean, know. Spider-Verse, like, the original Spider-Verse, like uh, too. the original OG one with Gwen was like probably 59 books, too. It was massive. And I, I read that whole thing. I'm not proud. Well, I am proud. Of I would not want to read that one. All right. Ultimate Black Panther, issue number three. We got Brian Hill. And uh, I think this is Caselli is uh, yeah, or Brian Hill and Caselli doing the artwork on this. So Brian Hill is a major becoming a major player in Marvel right now. He's writing Blade. He's writing I think two two books during um, Blood Hunt. So we'll see okay. if his how his chops are. So Zach will take it away, a little backstory, and then we'll jump right in. All right. So this is in the universe of the Ultimates, not the original Ultimates, but there are original characters from the Ultimates. Yeah, universe. I believe at least one, possibly more, because that's the maker. The maker jumps out of, along with a couple other people, uh, jumps out of the ultimate universe, comes into the regular universe. He figures out how to make another universe. Yeah, and makes another universe. Gets in there and removes, systematically removes all of the heroes or almost all of them by either taking them out prevent them from getting powers or they just never existed so that happens and then something happens to him but before he does that before he disappears i don't know what he's doing apparently he's locked up he makes a council and it's called the council of the makers and they rule the entire world in different regions they get together decide what they Mm -hmm. want to do and they rule the real world in different regions right and then they also have other bosses too. Anyways, this one specifically, and oh yeah, they're all villains. But for, you kind of, for the most part, yeah. Some of them are, they're supposed to be all bad guys. But yeah, villains. it's like either people that were, because I think Hulk is actually one of the, one of the leaders too, but. Quasi evil. Yeah. Semi, the Diet Coke of evil. It's a Diet Coke of evil. <laughs> and for example, one of the under, you know, bosses of the Maker Council is, for example, the Kingpin. He's not on the council. He's below it. Right mm-hmm. here. Here, here. Anyways, that's how it's going. But specifically for this title, they're in Africa, Wakanda, all of that. And you have Moon Knight, not the person, a group. They're called the group. It's between the two, we're assuming, heralds of the gods, Ra and Khonshu. Or Avatar, right? A- Avatars. Yeah, Avatar, yeah. Whichever. 
and they have a group of warriors that are under them and they're trying to kind of looks like search for something slash take over africa mm -hmm. and so far wakanda hasn't been touched and all of that and t'challa doesn't really want to do anything at least he wants to wait and to see what happens but something happens towards the end of the book that kind of makes him a little bit like okay now i gotta do something he, there was an assassination attempt. Somehow they got in, right, and tried to assassinate T'Challa. Where like they kill, well, they kill his dad, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is like basically kill him the same way that they do in the movie. In the movie, they yeah. blow him up on a platform. But what yeah. happens is that their target was T'Challa and probably his father. But his father pushes him out of the way, push him down the altar, and the father and a few other people die mm -hmm. along with the bomber. So that kind of strikes hey, we need to uh, do something. And there's a couple of different things else going in on the series. I believe in that issue, they kind of show Killmonger a little bit. Yeah, they give a little preview of Killmonger and Storm, which this is yeah. their, this issue, no, issue three is their first full appearance. So you get the full Killmonger Storm action. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now we'll jump to the next issue, which is issue two before the third issue that we're going to be mainly talking about. So that one, T'Challa wants to figure out what he needs to I might be saying his name wrong, excuse me, but uh, he wants to figure out what he's w wanting to do with him, his sister, and whatever. Sure, he's all already from book one, wants to go, let's go hard, let's go fast, let's mess these people up. And his wife, uh, Okoyo. Okoyo, yep. Yeah. Okoyo says, like, hey, let's just take it easy. Let's go into this, if I remember correctly. And Okoyo, of course, was a former... Uh, Dora Milaje. Dora Milaje, thank mm -hmm. you. And... If I remember correctly, he talks to this council that's in Wakanda that kind of are seers and, the, you know, pretty much him and his father don't really trust him, but they use him, you know, to try to give him predictions of the future. Mm -hmm. And they're fairly accurate. They're saying that like, he's going to meet a, someone of the storm or I can't remember the exact wording. And that person might give him his first child. So I was like, oh, what does that mean? Obviously, kind of get you kind of have a feeling of already, you already know what's going to happen. Seems seems that way, yeah. They do give you, there is a big, like, um, like a big cliffhanger in the second book where yeah. they basically let you know that there is a bad guy inside of, inside of Wakanda that's working with the enemy. Yeah. And you get a feeling that it's a female, but you, that's all you get. Yeah. Which is surprising because they don't touch on that at all in this book. Right. But you were like, oh, who's the bad guy that's infiltrated? And then, and then you jump to book three. And so T'Challa, the Black Panther, finds some information where these people are going to possibly be from Shuri because they did some kind of spectral, whatever, fancy analysis that they do. And they say they're probably over here. So he goes there, kind of gets ambushed, attacked, but then he gets saved by Killmonger and Storm. Yeah, which the Moon Knight soldiers kind of look like those guys from uh, Squid Games. Like they have like the different symbols on their heads like is it like some of them have the moon knight symbol and some of them have the raw symbol and they're yeah. like let's do a tug of war see how far we can pull you over this head oh you're all dead <laughs> here here's a billion dollars <laughs> <laughs> only one of you will survive they don't tell you that in squid game but anyways that's how the book ends and now we're in the third book did yeah. i miss anything nope yeah you got it you got all it. right quick synopsis kind of got to cover the back a little bit in case anybody forgot of course, of course. So the book is your first time. The book opens to uh, Shuri. I was gonna say Sheena, but Shuri battling one of her battle droids or train droids, some kind of droid, and she's pretty dang strong. She's like punching holes in this thing, so I'm figuring she has kind of like similar powers to T'Challa, to mm -hmm. unless she got to Exo. Not too. yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know a, a lot of people have complimented the story that. The Shuri character is much different than she is in the 616 universe. More like, And a lot of people like that because they don't want it to be an exact copy. And just be like, oh, she's going to be exactly the same as she is. And she's clearly like way more aggressive and like doesn't want, doesn't like want to listen to them. And she actually would rather like kill people than help yes. people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she's more war motivated than healing motivated. So she's fighting the robots. Akoi, the, the queen. I was like, hey, what's going on? You'd rather destroy your robots or your technology than, uh, you know, tell me where T'Challa is and what's going on? Anyway, she's talking a lot of crap, a lot of smack. 
and you know Sherry, you know gives her lip right back. You know, it's like you gonna talk to your queen like that. It's like it's like yeah, if you're gonna piss me. You're gonna make me mad. And then like you're gonna are you gonna tell me where T'Challa is? Like no, no, he's on his mission. Like and then he's like, she tries to grab Shuri, and Shuri's like, like, like does a little shoulder like, almost like tries to hit her, but like kind of brush off. And they're like, let's fight. Mm-hmm. Just instantly kind of. Who are you to- rooting for? When that happens, Shuri. You're rooting for Shuri. I was rooting for. Shuri. I was rooting for Okoye. When I and I'm like, ah, right, she's gonna kick her butt. Yeah, that's why I thought too. I thought I was like, I was rooting for the underdog. And turns out, Okoye is uh, either Rusty or Shuri got a lot better because Shuri whooped her butt, and she's like, yeah, my uh, idea stands, because they're like, you know, they were like, you know, uh, this fight is gonna go off their honor, and whoever. Whoever wins, their honors or their ideal is correct, and whoever loses, their ideal is wrong. That's what ideal. And so it's like, hey, my stance is right. Get out of here, Koyo. They're, they're kind of like the little like angel and devil on Black Panther's shoulders. You know what I mean? Like the one trying to feed him like not necessarily good advice, but peaceful advice, and the other one trying to feed him like, you know, let's go to war, let's kick some butt. Yeah, exactly. And then now that's the end of that scene. It jumps to, I believe, forward to Black Panther Mm -hmm. and Killmonger out of costume hunting a gazelle and everything. Or they just killed a gazelle and they're like, yeah, is this Killmonger is talking a little crap. It's like, hey, I was a Wakandan, but then I saw how the world was being treated. And they're like, I can't just be a Wakandan and be content. I need to be out in the world. So he left Wakanda and he started living with the people. In so little words. I'm not yeah. saying exactly right. He kind of like, a, so, somewhat similar to the movie, but um, without like the, like I guess him being like a, a also terrorist at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he would not, you can tell he's not like a terrorist kind of guy, but. Uh, I, yo, yo. I never finished anything. You could, hey, this could be the start. Yeah, it's, uh, okay, so. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> we know Kill- people that have that problem too. Yeah. <laughs> so, Killmonger's talking a lot of crap. It's like, have you ever gutted an animal before? Is like, you ever killed an animal? It's like, yeah, I've killed an animal. It's like, then gut this thing. Make it look sloppy so it look like an animal did it. Like, or uh, not a human did it. And then bring back the meat. And then walks off. He's like, I own you now. He doesn't say that. But that's why I kind of like, I'm like, whoa. Killmonger's talking a lot of crap to the king of uh, Wakanda. It's yeah. Like, wow. So then they leave. And there's like, I, Killmonger says, I gotta show you something, but I don't trust you. So I gotta walk you to a blindfold. I <laughs> know. He's like, and put this blindfold on. I only trust myself and Storm, right? Or my, he doesn't even say the person's name. I only trust, we only trust ourselves, which is not him and. He's like, I only trust two child. people. Like, <laughs> I'm one of them and you're not the other. You're not the other, basically. <laughs> so they're walking this and that's like, this is a big secret. This is why. The real deal why Kanchu and Ra, Moon Knight, collectively, is here in Africa. And it's a big secret. It's like, it can't be that big of a secret. I mean, I thought they'd just be after vibranium from Wakanda. But actually, it's much more than that. Or at least that's what they allude to. And then he brings him to the spot, unblindfolds him. And it looks like the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin. Oh, finished it. <laughs> uh, uh, Cave of Wonders from Aladdin with a bunch of weird statues. The statues that don't really make much sense. Yeah, it was like a tiger statue, right? Or some or a tiger. Was that? It was a lion. Oh, it was a lion. It was oh, like God. a lion or, or some kind of cat, ferocious cat beast. Anyways, panther. Maybe it was a panther. I don't know. But anyways, it's like, what's this? Uh, this is a cave that we found or a temple. And it's older than Wakanda. It's like, that's impossible. Nothing's older than Wakanda. It's like, it is possible. And now you learn something. I know. Did he say, like, now you think you're the master of the possible or something yeah. like that? It's, you think you're the master of the possibilities? You are not king of Wakanda. And uh, anyways, that's why I think you would sound Sweet like. the leg. Talking, talking a lot of crap. And then they're like going through this you place. You think there was going to be a fight, but there was yeah. not a fight. A lot of cool like imagery and carvings and all that. They jump down a hole and then they jump. They're about to jump down the other hole. It's like, we got to drop this piece. And there's, um, what's it called? Uh, vib- not vibrate. Vibrate? No, it's not vibranium. 
right? Is I don't know. It was like crystals. That part was weird to me because then he's like, okay, there's another hole. And this one's too deep for us to jump down. It is vibrating. Yeah. So then he's like, and then uh, Killmonger's like, yeah, we have to like, Storm will bring us down through this hole. Yeah. But then he like breaks this piece off the wall and like drops it yeah. down the hole. There's like a bunch of vibranium crystal ore, I guess, and drops it down the hole. In the picture, I didn't feel like there was that many on the wall. Was there that? I mean, like, if you did like 10 more times, there wouldn't be any more crystals to break off and throw down yeah, the hole. Yeah, That's how I was like, wait a minute. Like, how often does he use this secret yeah. entryway? So, so he cracks one off and that sounds like fart. But uh, <laughs> cracks, cracks one, cracks one drops it down, down the hole. And Storm shoots up air so they can have a nice landing and landed mm -hmm. and shows storm without her being electrified and all oh, like you can see her clearly she has a really cool hairdo really yeah, cool I like her outfit. hair in this one yeah i mean talking really cool like so now we shall bring what we have together and make this world better that's basically what she said yeah. she said something like i use my power for the benefit of the people not for the benefit of myself as what she was saying, I was like, okay, that's a little, that's a, that's a little like upbringing and everything. That's a, it's like you're hanging out with Killmonger. I, I would have figured that you would have been like, time to kill everybody, except maybe not this Killmonger. Yeah, maybe not killing as many people this time. Just and knowing just is half the battle. That's true. And then they get there and it's like, okay, what's the big secret? And then they go into this room and they see this big floating blue orb of who knows. And like, that's what Kanchu wants. What is it? We don't know. Did you not know what it is either? No. I don't know what it is either. No, they said, like, we don't know what it is, but they want it. And it, they kind of alluded, like, because this power has some kind of connection to Vibranium, because it, it it stopped uh, Black Panther's armor. It did, from... yeah. He has, like, Vibranium armor like he does in the movie, where, like, it can, like, like grow over his face, yeah. which I don't like his armor in this at all. I don't like his mouth is exposed. Yeah. I don't like that at all. I don't like that as you can yeah. see his like, open mouth. Yeah. And one of the hints is like what they were saying is like, you're not the master of vibranium here. Yeah, that's like true. That. What did you think that was? I, I think that might be like where the part of like whatever the vibranium came from, maybe came from another planet. And then that's like the big piece of whatever that was a control unit or something. I don't know. It's like a vibranium obviously is much more than what we thought it was, at least in this universe. It looked like a portal, kind of. Maybe like a oh, okay. portal. I don't know. I could. Oh, yeah. There was a bunch of dead skeletons. So the people protecting it was like all scattered everywhere. But also at the same time, it didn't look that they were that old. Oh, Wakandan City of the Dead, Andrew said. That might. It could be. Or like I read, I read earlier the original idea of the book was to have like kind of like two like warring gods against each other. Maybe it's like the Wakandan god of the panther. No, they said it's not your god in the in the book too. Oh, it's not your god. Of course, he might. They said they don't know what it is, so it could. Yeah, it's like, I'll tell you. I, I'll tell you what it's not. It's your god. And like, yeah. I was wrong. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you what it's not. Your god. <laughs> yeah. It's like what the heck? Uh, Doesn't make any sense. All right, but. Anyway, what do you think so far? <sighs> what do you What do you think, Princess? In comparison to the other books, it's, not your favorite. Yeah, it's. Mel no, said it was a little slow for him. I don't mind slow books. Uh, I think this is a nice little build up, but it for sure is. It's for sure gotten a little bit better, but the one that's taken like not the lead, but like made a big jump was that Unlimited X Men. I bet my favorite so far is Spider Man. So this yeah. one is like. If it was a three point, what did I say last time? Three point yeah, th oh? Yeah. It'd be like a 3.2. Yeah. It's definitely, I, th I think, um, probably taking the third ranked space for me of the Ultimate series, like, because they had X Men took a huge jump mm. on the last one, where that one started out really slow. But um, I will say, like, um, still a good read. I'm really interested to see, like, where these all connect up, or, like, I think we're already going to get that Ultimate uh universe or whatever one that like already a tie-in or crossover that's yeah, happening sometime funny. so it's hard to say some people feel like some of the books are like kind of treading water a little bit until like they figure out where they're all going to meet up but i like that they're building this world really well the only character i don't like i guess not care for but is kind of hard to connect with is probably black panther himself i like all the supporting characters a little bit more and i feel like there's a lot of growth with them whereas like t'challa kind of feels like regular to child like 616 to like i kind of mm. wish he was like a little bit more different 
in, yeah. in a different way. And I know he, you know, he's like kind of just like letting everyone else like kind of tell him what to do. I mean, only like with his father dying, where he started like torturing people, which was a little bit weird, you know. Like, but it's kind of you know, he and everyone else is better. Treading water be a good description. That's a, a little bit, you know. That's I, like obviously it's all building up where they have to meet somewhere. So they're like Hickman's running the whole thing. So he's probably like, all right, guys. Do some cool stories until like they all meet up somewhere and like hopefully like it works out for you but um uh, i like it it's still really good and i still would put it like above a three but uh spider-man still takes the cake for me as like the the best story so far we'll Same. see we'll see what's all these i think shuri and killmonger could come out of this being really cool characters like really really cool as well as storm storm's always cool storm's always cool <laughs> i'm the cupcake warrior all right that's good but uh Yep. Oh yeah, Zach, let's see what you got. What are those games? What are the games? We haven't uh, done games in a while. I, uh, it's it's wrapped in a bag. Peanuts. So it has peanuts wrapped in a bag. Box is a little smushed a little bit. So I'm hoping it's not damaged. Uh, this was a drunken buy. Uh, some seller dropped the price by 40%. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, I have to buy it. And, oh, what the heck? Oh, what's oh no, you know where those peanuts are going, Milt. Wait, who did <laughs> No, I would never. Oh, it has to go to somebody or it goes in the trash. You have to recycle all peanuts. Or Lucy will pull the ball out from under you before you kick it. And Snoopy won't lay on his doghouse. Wait, that's a different peanut. <laughs> He's like, you rat! Oh, wow, that's a... Uh... He, he like taped it shut. Man, I should have opened this a little bit more. Like, you gotta savage that. You gotta savage it. It was scotch tape too. Was it gonna be Irish tape? No, I thought it'd be like box tape, but. Oh, wait. The front? You got somebody's like old. Oh, that's that's the front. I don't want. Old bag? I, I got. I got. It looks like. I think it's a. It's a, it is a new stuff, so I don't have to resend it in. Yeah, this book has dropped a lot. I have it raw, but now I got it slapped. As long as they sent me the right one. Jeez. Oh, Let's see. Let's see if it's cracked real quick. Oh yeah. What did you get, Zach? Gold. It is Battle Chasers. Oh, it's cracked. Oh, yeah. Got him. Recently on the drop list. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. So, yeah, we do pull the trigger when the books drop quite a bit. Battle Chasers 1, the yeah. Gold Booty variant. I don't know how limited this book is, but I've only found one. It's Madeira, right? Madeira? At least the gold one. Yeah, Joe Madeira. Joe Madeira. And it's, I uh, believe, the first appearance of Red Monica, yeah. or first cover? First cover and first appearance, I think so. I don't, yeah, you know, maybe she's not on the... Is she on the other cover? Uh... First appearance of Goalie, Red Monica, Garrison, and Genoa. Ooh, la, and, la. Yep. So this is a very hard book to find, and it's adding into my 9.8 collection. Maybe I'll resubmit it and try to get that 9.9. Pre <laughs> I hope you pre-screen and it comes back not slab. Oh, that would man. happen, right? I think so. Unless you're like, unless they call you, I was like, do you really want to send this? They just crack it over and give it back to you. <laughs> this is not 9.9. That's funny. impossible. Well, yeah, that's what I got. And uh, I think um, maybe soon I'll have some other stuff coming. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I don't spend too much money. Sweet. I got those games. And milk does the body well. Ooh. It does. All right, guys, wrap the show Take up the for tonight. We're going to go and watch uh, X Men 97. Hopefully it's a good episode. I know Liger probably already watched it, I'm sure. I'm sure he's watched it already. But uh, um, yeah, it's good to see all you guys again. Do us a huge favor. Like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Just to let you guys know, Princess will be on what? What? Not uh, <laughs> this weekend, 6 p.m. So if you didn't get a double dose of Princess you were looking for last weekend, uh, you will get it this weekend. So come hang out with the Princess at 6. Me and Zach will be there in the background chilling. Chilling as always. I want to say... Good to see Andrew back. Good to see you again, yeah, buddy. Good to see you, man. While. We appreciate you coming good back. To see to check in with us. We appreciate all of you, though, as well. Yes. Uh, Every single one. Yeah. Zach, you got anything else? Yeah, you got to share. How do you do that? So you spend time with friends and family. But in this case, friends. 
both in the house and over the interwebs. We have a good time. We talk to, to each other through the chat, voice, and messaging. I really like that. I really like this Wednesday episode. It really makes me happy. And uh, yeah, that's another way to get those games, there those happy go. games. Yeah. It's nice to be able to talk about comics that I read. Otherwise, like, I just read them and I don't talk to any. I talk to Coco, but she doesn't listen to me. If we start reading manga, we could talk about manga. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. Until we uh, see you next time, stay safe and remember. Get those friendship games. Get them. <laughs> get so those cringe. manga games. They're so cringe. <laughs> friendship games. Hey, later, guys. Cheers. Later, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Mills. Later. Thank Bye, you very Gary. much. Bye, Sharky. All right. Bye, everybody else. Bye, everybody. We love you.